What's up everybody? Welcome to AOG. Welcome to the paint room again. And we're finishing up the day. We just finished spraying the set. And um, you know, now what we've got to do is we've got to clean up our gun. We've done a lot of videos in this paint room of spraying cabinets and how to correctly spray them. Um, and now it's time to do one on how to clean these guns because when you get through with them, you don't just throw them in the trash. You got to clean them up and uh, you know, there's a proper way to do it and there's an improper way. And there's also times when you know you need to, uh, you know, toss some of the gaskets and stuff that are in there because they get worn down really bad. And it doesn't really matter how many times you clean them. Um, they're good for about, you know, uh, probably a dozen uh, full days of spraying. Um, so I can get a lot of spray done with the gaskets. Um, but you know whenever it gets time, it'll start kind of leaking out of the lid and everything. And you know that it's time to get new gaskets. All the parts on this uh, Fuji Spray Q4 Platinum are um, the you know the gaskets and stuff are disposable replaceable it's easy to get the parts um, it actually comes in a kit with the gaskets the feeder tube um, and the filter that goes in the feeder tube so you know you can get all that it's like 30 bucks um, so it's really not that expensive um, you want to keep several of them around I keep I keep a bunch of them here just in case something happens to my gaskets and you know I start leaking around my rim or something and you don't want that to happen um, so you know I'm gonna take this gun apart and show you how to clean it and uh it doesn't really take that long to do it it's just something that has to be done if you don't do it correctly it'll mess up uh your spray in the next day you'll have no flow low flow um you'll have a lot of problems and you'll be trying to figure out what in the world's going on um but a lot of the cleaning you can do you can do it before you start spraying like if I, i'm gonna spray a set tomorrow and i'll clean my uh feeder tube tomorrow because I like to let the paint dry up in it and then I can just blow it out with my air nozzle and it doesn't make a big old mess and I don't mess up my hose and all that stuff. Um, so anyways, that's something that we can do later. You let the paint dry in it and just roll it around in your fingers and it'll crackle it and then you take your air nozzle and blow it out and it'll blow all the trash out of it and you know it, then you're good to go again. Um, so anyways, let's get this gun taken apart and it's a cork gun and uh, the color we've been spraying out of this one is called Hinting Blue. It's a Sherwin Williams color. It's a really light blue. Um, it's a really pretty color. If I can get, that's what we've been spraying. Um, so whenever you open, when you first open this, it's locked like that. And this is where the air hooks to it right here. So it blows air up through here, blows it down in the cup, and then it pressurizes the cup and sends the paint back up and it comes out here um, and you got of course you got a trigger and this is your adjustment for your uh, the volume of paint that you get and this is the adjustment for the fan so this way makes the fan bigger turn it that way and it makes it you know a really tight stream I don't really spray it on a tight stream I like to spray it you know about halfway because um, if you spray it too tight you'll have runs and if you spray it too wide it'll just it just you can't really get the proper coating that I like to get. There's a happy medium in there where I like to be, to be able to get, you know, my paint color completely covered on the cabinet piece. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you take this thing apart is loosen this and open it up and let the air pressure off of it. And you hold the, just hold the trigger down like this right here and it'll let any paint that's up in the tube, it'll let it come out. So you want to do that first. And I got, this is my, I only bought these in gallons because the project I was shooting with this particular paint was not a very big one. So I only needed like two gallons of paint. So I just bought it in gallons instead of fives. Most of the time we buy five gallon paint jugs at the time. Um, but, you know, I don't want this stuff to sit around here and waste. I probably, I might use this color again, but I really don't know. So the first thing we want to do is dump that back in there. And if you've got, like in my five gallon cans, I'll wash this out with lacquer thinner, wash my cup out, and then um, when it, just with the first, you know, whenever I'm rinsing out my cup, and I'll pour it back in to the bucket, and that way it helps thin the paint down, because um, this stuff, you know, it can get thick on you. If it gets thick, it's not going to spray good, and if it doesn't spray good, you're going to be in here fussing and aggravated, not, not knowing really what's going on. Um, so you want to pour maybe a fourth of a cup in there or so. Let's put this back on and lock it down. And just shake it up real good. You wanna make sure you get that lacquer 
thinner all up in the top here because you want to make sure that all this is cleaned out. So just kind of shake it around a little bit. Don't be scared of it. And most of the time I would pour this back if, like I said, if I had a five gallon can, but I've only got a one gallon. If I put this in there, it's going to be so thin it's not going to be any good because I've already thinned that paint pretty good. So you can see my tube's pretty clean. My cup's pretty clean. Uh, I got a little bit of wiping to do in there, but that's not really a big deal. Dump that in our trash bucket. And we got these rags like this. It's just like t-shirt material. I buy them from our local Ace Hardware store. They come in, a, you get them in 10 pound boxes or you can get them in 25 pound boxes. You can get them in one pound. Um, they come in all different kinds of sizes. I prefer the 10 pound box. Um, 20, the 25 pound box, just to, you know, it's a big box and takes up a lot of space. And the area that I have back here where I work, it isn't, isn't that big. And so anything that takes up more space than it's needed is just taking up space that I could use for something else. Um, my paint room is not the biggest, but it does what we need it to do. It's, uh, it's about 16 or 17 feet deep. And I think we're about um, 14 feet wide which, you know, a lot of that's taken up with cabinet space. Um, you know, I got my sprayers over here that takes up about two feet into the room. I got some storage over here on the other side that's got stains and stuff like that. And then all my loose buckets of paint are stored up under here. And then I've got some back over here um, and where my lacquer thinner, I keep all my lacquer thinner over here on this side. Um, so anyways, just want to clean the cup out because what we're, what we're going to do next is put some clean lacquer thinner in there and we're gonna shoot it out the exhaust. Um, Cause I wanna make sure I got clean lacquer thinner going back through the gun. And you know, I'm not spraying, if you, if you spray dirty lacquer thinner through there, it's not gonna clean the gun like you need it to. So you just wanna make sure that anything you're doing, that it's, you know, it's pretty clean. When you're, especially when you're running through these guns, cause you don't wanna clog up, you know, all the guts that are up in there, you just don't wanna clog it all up. So what we'll do, just put a little bit more lacquer thinner in there, about a cup full. Lock it down. And always seal your lacquer thinner back up. It's kind of like gasoline. It can evaporate. And anything you evaporate, you're just wasting it. So what we'll do, come here and cut my fan on. And so this is the air hose. And it hooks right into the base of the gun right there on the handle. Just lock it right in. It's good and tight on there. And this actually has a six foot whip on it. It's an accessory that you can buy with this unit. Um, if you get this, I highly suggest getting the whip. Um, it's a little bit more flexible and you got a lot more, you know, maneuverability with it, I think. Um, the, the hose that it's connected to is kind of rigid. And I, I think it'd be hard to, you know, like you can hold this thing and fold it and flip it and whatever, but the other, I don't think the main hose, you'd really be able to do that too. So we're gonna flip this on real quick. And then just shoot it out. So we're shooting uh, the clean lacquer thinner. And see, I can adjust the fan right there. We can adjust the volume. If I want to clean it out a little bit faster, I can unscrew this right here. And it pulls my needle back farther. There's a spring right in here and it's attached all up here in my trigger. And so whenever I pull it back, it lets my needle go farther back in and it just shoots more volume out. So now I got a pretty high volume of paint going out of this thing. I want to make sure that it's like flowing through there really, really good because I want a lot of pressure up in that gun to blow out any paint that's left in there. This paint's been sitting in here a while. Um, I was spraying some pieces here and there. And so I've had this paint in since about lunchtime and it's almost six o'clock. So it's been, it's been in there a pretty good while. Once you blow all that lacquer thinner out, just turn everything back on, unhook your air. I'm going to cut the fan off because it's just annoying. Alright, you want to open the gun back up. And you can see that's a pretty clean cup. And it was so pressurized, you see the little smoke coming out of there, that's pretty cool. And so this is what the gun looks like. Um, so, you know, my pickup tube's clean. My gasket's pretty clean. If you, you can take the lacquer thinner and clean around that gasket. 
Um, or you can take the gasket out, whichever way you want to do it. Um, like I said, it's a disposable product. We keep plenty of them on hand. And so I really don't worry about it too much because the pressure that you put on these things, eventually they just wear out anyway. So it doesn't really do any good to take them out and clean them. And you can't, you, you can take your pocket knife and kind of dig them out. But you want to, if you do that, you want to cut it out from this inside lip right here. You don't want to go to the outside because if you go to the outside, that's where you'll have the leak. If it's going to leak, it's better for it to leak on the inside and go back into the cup. If it if it if you mess up the outside of it, it'll leak to the outside of the cup. It'll drip paint all over your project, and that is not what you want to happen. Um, I've had it happen before, and it's frustrating and aggravating. And uh, these videos are to help you get better by the mistakes that I've made. Um, and we've had these Fujis for a while. And they are really good, um, really good units. I've never had a problem with them. They spray very consistently all the time. Anything that ever happens to these is, uh, it's most of the time it's user error. Um, I've had them where they wouldn't spray and go back and you, your pickup tube is, or your air, your air line, which is right here that flows air down into your cup, it will be completely stopped up with dried paint. And, you know, it was just, me being lax, cleaning one out, and not really thinking about what I was doing, and so most of the time, if you if you get bad reviews on these things, most of them are user error. It doesn't have anything to do with the equipment. Um, so I bought stuff that's had bad reviews, and you know, no problems. User error is the most common uh, factor of anything that fails. Um, so, anyways, I don't really worry about the outside of my gun too much i want the inside to be clean um if these guns don't have paint on them you probably ain't using them you cannot get all the paint off of these things don't even sit there and try you can soak them if you want to or whatever and then you could get it off but you're never going to get it off with a rag and lacquer thinner and i mean you can sit here and wipe this thing all night long and you're not going to get it clean the thing you really want to be focused on is what's inside the gun you want that to be clean um so what we'll do now we've sprayed our lacquer thinner through here our clean lacquer thinner so i know that the innards of this operating mechanism are 100 percent completely clean and so now what we're going to do is i'm going to take a little bit more lacquer thinner and this will help uh, preserve your parts on your gun and just put a little bit in the cup and you want just enough in there just to cover your parts and that's it so this is basically like a parts washing is what you're doing um, and it just it helps keep everything lubricated it helps keep all the the moving parts it helps keep them like squeaky clean um, so whatever you're painting with if you're doing uh, you know if you're spray, spraying oil based paint you want to clean everything out with paint thinner if you're spraying lacquer you want to clean it out with lacquer thinner if you're spraying water based paint you want to clean it out with water but you don't want to put water back in this cup with your parts you want to put lacquer thinner or paint thinner in there either one will be fine don't put any of the gaskets in there with it. They eat them up, um, and they won't be any good anyway. So I always leave my gaskets here and where they're supposed to be. Or you can take them out, and you can wipe them down and leave them out here. But they tend to get a little dry rotted if you do that. So I like them to be on the cup, in the moisture, and it helps, you know, keep them pliable. So you just want to make sure that all this stuff is pretty clean, especially around the, you know, anything that's going to touch a part of the gun, you want to make sure it's pretty clean. So the first thing we're gonna do is we'll unscrew this in. This is what holds my needle. So we'll take that out and be careful with that spring because it will take off on you. It's just a little spring like this. And then that part um, that screws in and holds that. Take this, drop it in the cup, and it's cleaning itself. So now we've exposed our needle. You wanna go ahead and take that out. That end will screw out. So just kind of be careful with it. And right here, there's a little bit of paint residue right here where it goes into where my trigger is. So make sure you keep that rag or the lacquer thinner on it and just wipe that down. And be careful with it because you don't want to just drop it down in the cup. You don't want to drop this needle because if it bends, if the tip gets, uh, you know, bratted or anything like that, it's never going to spray again like it's supposed to. So you want to be easy when you drop that in there. And the needle is the most important part of this gun. If it, if it ain't right, you're going to have some serious problems. And I don't know if you'd ever be able to figure out what's going on with it. It's just aggravating. So this nose piece right here, it just screws off. No big deal. No problem. 
and it's two pieces. So you got this nut that holds everything on, and then you got this piece that adjusts the spray of the fan. Now there will be a little bit of paint in that. Um, you go ahead and drop that in there and just take your rag and get that little bit of paint out of there. And most of the time that only happens like today whenever I left the paint in there a long time because my needle got clogged up and um, I had to go in there and clean it. And, you know, you kind of take the gun apart in the middle of what you're doing. Um, so anyways, you just have to spend a little bit of time extra if you leave the paint in there too long. So anyways, we got that nice and clean. I'm gonna drop that in there. And so the gun comes with this nut. And it's got a bunch of different functions that fits everything on this gun from these nuts up here. You know, you can flip it around, you can loosen all this and tighten it back up if you're completely taking this gun apart. Because there are replacement parts up in here that you can do. Um, if something happens to the gun, you can take this whole thing apart and you can buy individual parts for it, which is what I really like about it. I don't have to go out and just buy this whole mechanism. I can figure out what's wrong with it, purchase the parts, put it back together, voila. So this piece fits that piece like that. If you want to loosen it, I'd already loosened it a little bit. And you want to take this piece off. And that's all it is. Now unscrew that. Like I said, if paint, if it's been in there a while, you're gonna to want to kind of clean these parts before you put them back in there uh, because that paint residue will get all over everything and then you'll have to you know, clean them the next time you open the, when you get ready to spray again, you'll have to clean it all again. So get that nice and squeaky clean, no problem. Drop it down in the cup. And then we got a couple more parts in here. I can't get it to come apart. There we go. So this piece, when you're reassembling the gun, this is the first one that you'll put back on there. It goes right up against the nose. And it's got a little gasket right there. Um, and it just kind of seals everything up just so you're not losing paint all over the place. And you just want to kind of, you know, make sure you get it pretty clean. And then this gasket seals all of it together. So you put that on, you don't really have to do anything with it, just drop it down in there. And you can see this piece has got just a little bit of paint in there. We'll get out a good wiping. And we'll drop it down in the cup. Put this back on. And make sure your parts are coming to the back. Lock it down. And these, these Fuji units, they come with this nice little uh, hanger right here. So you just hang your gun on it. Just like that, and you're done. Um, so that's how you clean uh, the Fuji guns. Make sure you wear gloves um, because lacquer thinner is a cut finder, if you didn't know that. If you got any kind of cuts in your hand and it's really cold right now, so my, you know, your hands are dry, they're in lacquer thinner, they're gonna split and you know crack and all that stuff. You stick your cut hands in lacquer thinner, it won't take you but a minute to find it. So I always wear uh, these black latex gloves. Um, they'll, the lacquer thinner will eat these up um, so, you know, you put them in there, if you, you know, if you clean the gun three or four times, it's gonna, the fingers are just gonna come off of them. They're, they're pretty cheap, so I don't really worry about it. Um, but it keeps the lacquer thinner off my hands, and then I, my hands don't dry out, you know, too bad. So, anyways, just make sure that whenever you're doing this, that you clean all the parts that are coming out, any moving part that comes off of the gun or on a regular basis, just make sure that those parts are really, really clean. I don't worry about too much about, you know, if there's paint on the outside of the gun or whatever, that's gonna be there. It, it take you days to clean that stuff up. Um, so anyways, you know, just take care of your equipment. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments below. Like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can keep up with Armor God Woodworks whenever we come on. And, you know, I hope y'all have a blessed day. Uh, it's, but, you know, it's time to go to the house. So I'll see y'all later.